area. This brings us to an important question. Why did the past nations reject, hide, deny, and bury the message of the prophets and messengers? This can be explained by a number of reasons. The message that the prophets delivered went against everything that these nations were raised to believe. It went against the beliefs of their forefathers. These people had a strong attachment to the customs of their forefathers and were very sensitive with the regard to the good name of their fathers. They took pride in following their footsteps, whether right or wrong. They grew up worshipping idols before the prophets came along and told them that they were wrong, and that only Allah alone is worthy of worship without partners and sons. The idol worshippers felt that the prophets wanted to dethrone their god and did not tolerate the Muslims' rejection of their lifelong beliefs, reacting to the attempt with serious harassment and abuse. The disbelievers of some nations rejected their prophets because they were mere morals who ate, drank, and walked the markets like everyone else. To be convinced of prophethood, they arrogantly wanted God to send an angel down from heaven to accompany him. Some of the non-believers accused their prophet of incorporating into alleged revelation myths, legends, and fables of the past. Certain nations believed in many gods and they dedicated some of their cities to these false gods. They allowed people everywhere to come to worship their gods. If they bought into an Islamic belief that they were wrong, that Allah is the only God that should be worshipped and all other gods are false, their city would decline in visitors and revenue. This belief would mark the end of their political and economic domination. So they rejected their truth and in the end, greed, selfishness, money and power got the best of them. But the prophets came to nations beset with immense difficulties and adverse conditions. This call to true Islam took the slumbering men by surprise. These people's customs and habits were low and base in nature. Adultery, liquor, gambling, violence, stealing, dishonesty, murder, and all sorts of illicit practices were widespread among them. These were all condemned by Islam, and embracing Islam meant leaving all of these foul practices behind and adopting a new model of life, which many did not desire, as unwilling as they were to change their wicked old habits. In addition, their desire for worldly things made them slaves to their own desires. Nothing could move them from this, not even the command of God. The faith of Islam was sent down to free people from their own desires and their constant needs for material goods that will never bring them permanent happiness. God the Almighty has mentioned the stories of Paris nations and their wrongdoings in the Holy Quran to warn our nation against making the same mistakes they did. The repeating of their mistakes can lead to the same outcomes. This is why it is unfortunate that the current average Muslim rarely studies the Qur'an with deep reflection and contemplation over its significant verses and inherent signs. By comparing the past nations to our nation, they would come to a conclusion that our nation is in serious danger. The same sinful deeds that were committed in the past are being repeated by today's Muslims. God has given our nation warnings that if we repeat the errors and sins of past nations, we will be punished. God destroyed nations that disobeyed and denied the truth, and even today ruins of civilian cities and nations can still be seen as a reminder, proof, and a sign to mankind of His immense power. God is the most merciful and the most forgiving. However, God is also just, and His warnings should not be ignored, rejected, or Our prophet narrated, whoever guides another to a good deed will get a reward similar to the one who performs it. So please like, subscribe, and share this video. Assalamu alaikum.